Hey guys, it's MJ, the student actuary, and we're going to be talking about chapter one cash flow models for subject CT1. Now, CT1 is all about the financial mathematics behind actuarial science. So, in this chapter, we're going to be looking at seven different cash flows and what they mean. And these are essentially the building blocks to the rest of the course. So, I hope you enjoy the video. And let's start off with something known as a zero coupon bond. This is very simplistic. It's the very core or base unit um, of the chapter. And what it says, or what a zero coupon bond is, is I pay a little bit of money now and I get a little bit of, well, yeah, I pay some money now and I get some money later. So in more actuarial terms, you have a negative cash flow at the beginning and you have a positive cash flow at the end and the zero coupon bond provides a specified sum of money so it tells you how much these values are and it gives you a date in the future so what's happening is you'll put in an amount here there will be a time period and then you'll get another amount now normally this amount here will be larger than this amount and that is due to interest, but we'll start talking about interest um, in more depth in chapter two. For now, we're just looking at the, the structures of the cash flows. So zero coupon bond, very important, but very easy to understand, is you have a negative cash flow in the beginning, you wait some time, and then you get a cash flow at the end of that period, which is normally a little bit bigger. Let's look at something a little bit more complicated, and these are security cash flows. You get two types of security cash flows. You get the fixed interest and the index linked. And when I talk about a security cash flow, I'm talking about a bond. You know, this is something that a government bond could take on or some sort of long-term borrowing. And in the fixed interest security, what you're going to do is you're going to make your investment. And then what you're going to do is on certain calendar dates, you're going to receive little bits of interest. And then at the end of the time, you're going to get your cash flow back or your amount back. It could be a little bit more, it could be a little bit less, but you're going to get this lump sum or a big payment at the end with all these little interest rates. And because it's fixed interest, these all these amounts are the same and they normally stay up front. They'll be like, oh, this bond is going to pay out 7% or something like that. The index linked security as you can see here, it's a little bit different. And why it is like this is just because it moves in line with inflation. So if inflation is very high, which we see here, the investor is compensated for that by getting a little bit more. If inflation is very low, the investor just gets a little bit. So what happens here is you're getting more of a real amount, whereas here you're getting a nominal amount. And you should know that from basic economics, but Otherwise, just look it up. It's not too, too difficult. Then your equities can also provide cash flows. This is um, kind of what the cash flow will look like if you had to purchase a share on the stock market. So you pay for your share, you make your investment, and then what you're going to do is you're going to receive dividends. And normally you want the dividends to grow. That's a good sign of a healthy company. But the fact is, is that the dividends are variable. They're uncertain. You don't know what they're going to be in advance. Also, they could be, they're not coming out at set times like with the other one. There could be gaps where the company needs that money for expansion or just going through a hard time. And another interesting thing to see here is that the share goes in perpetuity. So it continues forever. Whereas these two, they end on these dates here when you get your amount back. Equity, you could get your amount back in if a share buyback was to take place. Okay, now let's look at some more insurance um, cash flows. And that is this one here, the annuity cash flow. And what this is, is you pay an amount and then you continue to receive um, a little bit of payments for a fixed uh, term and they normally have a fixed amount and this is normally how a pension could work so you pay an amount here and then the company pays you your little pension and what we we're talking about um, earlier is you get two types of these 
when you make like a loan or you lend your money, there's two types. You get the interest only loan and you get the repayment loan. I don't know if they can both fit in the screen at the same time. So anyway, let's focus on the first one. So here you make your payment. Um, so you make this and you get a single repayment at the end, which is the size of the whole amount borrowed. Okay, so what happens here? So let's say you invest $10 and interest is 1% uh, or let's say 10% per annum. Then you'd get $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, and then you'd get your $10 back. Now that works a little bit differently to a repayment loan. So here um, you lend $10, but instead of getting $1 back, $1 back, the payments consist of an interest and a capital component. So you're getting maybe $2, $2, $2, $2, $2. And the $1 covers the interest and the other dollar covers the capital repayment. But that's a very crude example. Um, but yeah, that is, that's basically the, the seven different cash flow, oops, cash flow models that you need to know for chapter one. So just as a quick recap, you've got the zero coupon bond where you lend someone money and then a week later or whenever they give you the amount back. Um, you've then got the more sophisticated where you lend your money, they pay you your interest and you get an amount back. It can even be linked to inflation. A stock market or share doesn't have an ending, so it goes on forever and it's a little bit uncertain. So these are, out of all the ones I've spoken about, this is the hardest one to value. And if you can figure out how to value this correctly, you'll make a lot of money on the stock market. Um, then we spoke about annuities, and you're going to see this a lot in actuarial science. And then you have the interest only, and you have repayment loan definitions. And John, that's kind of all chapter one is about. Um, subscribe and like this video, because I am in the process of making chapter two, which talks about the time value of money. But yeah, thanks for watching and I am aiming to get all of the CT1 chapters done as well as CA1 and I'm also going to try to do some CT3 and then, I mean CT4 and then after I've done CT4, let me know what, um, what subjects you want me to do. I've also got CT5 on my channel so check that out. Thanks for watching guys. Cheers.